Good morning and welcome to the Capital Gang. I am Oscar Semoy Amsoke. And as Moses would say of a morning program, we have a bevy of topics for you. Um, <clears throat> uh, I have a bit of a cough, a bit of a cold. And as uh, Mr. Katana will say, some people are dying of coughs and colds. Uh, Mr. Katana, I did not know you are a, a, a doctor. I don't know how you have surmised <laughs> that illness. Probably a native doctor. <laughs> a native doctor. Mm. Um, then in the studio, I have Mr. Uh, well, I should say good morning and welcome to gang, uh, Benjamin Katana. Good morning, Oscar. Yes. It's always a pleasure yes. to be part of the gang. Yes, uh, NUP Maneman. <laughs> yes, treasurer. Treasurer. Mm. Most welcome. Yes, then I have uh, Mr. Harold Kaija. Mr. Harold Kaija, you're most welcome to gang. I'm happy to be here at the gang. Yes. Uh, to join the team and I'm um, next to this woman from the mountains. <laughs> the woman, I'm... <laughs> 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 you know, you saw uh, Ken Richam is the man, then we eventually got the woman. We eventually got the woman. <laughs> the woman. Sounds <laughs> like Trump saying the woman from Michigan. <laughs> from, 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 from the mountain. From, the mountain. <laughs> from Mount Elgon. <laughs> um, welcome to Capital Gang, Honorable Lydia Wanyoto Mutende. Mm. Uh, thank you, Oscar, and good morning to our listeners and our viewers. You've made me sit next to Kaija. I don't mm. know how the show will, <laughs> will go, but uh, greetings from Mbale City. Mm. And uh, it is circumcision season, so Imbalu, Kadodimu Kinavula, Ichale, you don't have a case. How is it going with uh, how is it going with the rains and so on? Are people safe in Mbale? Yeah, uh, there's been uh, an ongoing campaign about uh, our people who live in the vulnerable areas, the mountain areas like in Bududa, up in Wanale, then in uh, Ulambuli. And uh, I've seen officials from Ministry, Office of the Prime Minister, trying to make sure that those who have stubbornly stayed there can come down and to deal with the issues of culture because many of them had gone back for the cultural season because they believe that they have to get circumcised from the mm. traditional sites but they've been told that uh, this is not the best time to go there because uh, it's raining maybe they can go back for that during the dry season in december but for now it's very risky to remain in those sites up in the mountain so they should come down uh, but the, the season for circumcision was launched on the 3rd of August and all the clans now have their own calendar on how they are having their young men getting into the season. Even my own family, we've already had our day and uh, the young people in, have become men and strong citizens of the community. Thank you. Okay. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Then I also have Mr. Ivan Bamoyana, an earth observation researcher. Uh, you're most welcome to gang, uh, Mr. <laughs> Ivan Bamoyana of Makiri. Yes, one of the research methods is, is observation. <laughs> <laughs> so am I safe? <laughs> <laughs> am I to be observed? Uh, thank you, our listeners. This is Ivan Bamoyana from Makiri University, Department of Dramatics and Land Management, and I'm an earth observation researcher. Department of? Geomatics and Land Ge Management. Ah. Then what, what does SEDAT mean? Said that is a uh, college of engineering, design, art, and technology. Ah, fantastic. So, to, what, what do you study to become an earth observation researcher? Oh, we study a very simple mathematics called geomatics. Mm. It's basically the art and science of measuring things on the earth's surface. And the earth's surface has part of space, so the routes for the airplanes on ground, including your land and underground mm. as well. Fantastic. So we needed you at Chitezi so that Chitezi doesn't happen. I wonder what happened. <laughs> oh, yes, we, we, we were there, but yeah, nature is nature. The environment is the environment. Mm. Like I say, one unique thing about the environment is it cannot be neglected. It forces itself on the agenda. You can't deploy against it. 
you can't use guns against it if it says it's there's going to be a landslide then you do the process of taking care of it mm. if you don't it will march to parliament to be on your agenda mm. yeah so and for a researcher you see you seem fatalistic so this was bound to happen <laughs> only god could have stopped it uh he, not really we would have done something about it okay. uh, we would have stopped using the landfill and and flattened it a bit uh, but yes it did happen mm. and so now we are <coughs> responding so going a little bit backwards mm. what 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 would you say happened right now it's uh, it's a party of events just like uh, the way a child fails at school and mm. then they say ah he wakes up late uh, He's stubborn. So here it's a party of events, and we are investigating that. Mm. Uh, slopes may have failed. The piling may have been really high. I think now that you're close to me, you'll get to see the live pictures from there. Mm. So the, the, um, the heights may have been really high. Uh, the compaction factor has not been looked at. Uh, all those things determine that the uh, landfill was actually full. And that's why I think KCC in 2018 procured Dundu uh, with the idea that, you know, we need to move and get away from here. Mm. Yes. So were, these, were there signs that this, this could collapse? They, they mean, there have been some letters written by the director, Mr. Okello, who was in charge. Is it Dr. Okello? Yes. Who was, who's kind Dr. of in charge. Yes. So the signs were there? Yes. Uh, I, I think there's... Uh, something people have seen on social media i think our, our research just a research clip from our, our students in, in civil engineering who assist slope analysis and and who did a slope analysis and found that uh the place was not really stable and a certain side you know would collapse there has been subsequent research uh saying this can go down okay and so the landfill has given us time uh to deal with it and and so now we can look into uh what didn't what we would have done different and now that the disaster is here uh, so what what do we do what first of all we need to understand what's the magnitude we are dealing with uh but i think for most people they think something collapsed and they are not really aware of the magnitude of what we are dealing with but now the concentration is on the magnitude of what we are dealing with mm. yes Who, who's looking up the magnitude of what we're dealing uh, with we, I think there are a lot of people on ground. Uh, government is on ground. I know that the National Building Review Board is on ground. KCC is on ground. Police is on ground. IG is on ground. So there are people. But then there's also what us, the independent researchers do, like on behalf of university for scholar purposes, to actually be able to put out the actual measurements. Okay, so for example, if they tell you that the landfill was about... 39 acres 35 mm. is the solid component that collapsed so when you think it has collapsed you you think it has something has fallen but this is something that has collapsed and covered 22 acres so when we talk about covering 22 acres you begin to realize what we are dealing with that's not small if we tell you that it has covered 65 houses then you know that uh, those houses must have had people when we tell you that um the house that actually caught our interest was the house in Chitetika. There's a valley in between Chitezi and Chitetika. So that house was uh, 100 meters away from the lowest point of that valley. And it was a story From the lowest point? Of that valley. Mm. And, and it, was 100 me- uh, it was 100 meters away and 10 meters on the rise. But the rubbish came down the valley, climbed a hill 10 meters upwards for 100 meters. So we begin to say this was false. This was false. And then when you measure it, for example, along its longest stretch, you're going to find that the rubbish moved within a distance of 800 meters. 800 meters, even your eyesight is beginning to get compromised mm. how much you can see. So that's how big it is. Mm. That's two football fields. If you no twenty two football fields. Twenty two football fields. Yes, because it covered twenty two acres. Right. Yeah. And in 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 what time? In what time? Mm. Uh, the Mr. Kaija is trying to measure it with his hand. I don't think he will succeed. 
so most people uh, have this basic situation mm. that Aneka is a football field. Mm. Yeah, and so usually I tell them you're looking at around 22 of them. Mm. So it happened at 8.15 in the morning. Mm-hmm. 8.15 in the morning. And for us, it is the stories out of there that have kept getting our attention and, and, and driving our research. I can give you one example why I'm particular with the time it, that it's, eight, it's 7.15. 7.15 or 8.15? 7, sorry, it's 7.15. 7.15. Mm. There's a, a pastor. He had gone to overnight prayers. And then he came back and his family was not there. He, all he could see was rubbish. I had uh, um, an opportunity to reach the such area. And this pastor, I can tell you that the um, Uganda police, the UPDF are doing a very good job. They're actually the people doing manning the excavators. And so uh, this man could no longer tell where particularly his house was. But he says, I've not gotten my wife and children. Mm. They are still there. So we, we, that's what we do at Observation Science. So yeah. we decide, let's observe. Let's go and look for where this particular house was. The, the gentlemen of, of the force, uh, UPDF and, and um, police, had actually dug around that area seven meters down but they could still not reach the house. So we, we, they had dug a big area, so we reached there and actually I located the house. Like, this is where we need to dig to find this person's family. So we, the digging commenced, and, and I can tell you I was very impressed with the synchronization of how they try to look up someone. They will put spotters on the tracks, just they don't miss the body. Now, this is what you need to understand about solid waste. It is very hot, temperature-wise, mm. when they dig it up, mm. and it has methane gas coming out of it. So everyone is shocked all the time, like they're trying to cover up, and then they realize they need the aeration. And those men are braving all that condition, and they're looking out for people. And so you don't expect a decent body to come out by now because of the temperatures with that... And so what basically happens is they dug, we could see some bricks, they dug, we reached ground, they, we went seven meters further down. So we are talking a person who was, the house which was covered by around seven meters, then we go like another seven meters, and it was very sad we could not find the people. Mm. But the effort was really satisfying. But then the gentleman is still stuck, you know, he can't find the people. Mm. So it's... Um, it's it's really those stories that make us move in and now locate where the actual people may be. Mm. Yes, they. <clears throat> I received a report from KCCA this morning. Uh, Kitezi situation report, twenty third August, uh, twenty twenty four. It was yesterday. Thirty five bodies came from the rubble. Eighteen male, seventeen female, fourteen survivors, and then they have three hundred and seventy four displaced persons in the tent. And KCC has set up emergency medical services on site. 14 survivors means what? Those who they manage to get out quickly. Right. Uh, what, what you realize is that some houses were not completely covered. So the immediate rescue managed to get out some people. Mm. Yes. And 14 seems very few, rather few. The, it, I think you, the height that mm. covered the people. Mm. When you get a break, I'll show you the, some of those pictures that are coming out of there. The height of the rubbish that covered the people could not enable immediate response to dig them out. We are talking about 65 houses. The, 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 some people had speculated that it was 90 houses. How did you work out that it's 65 houses? Okay, so what we do, we get uh, the most recent image before that disaster. And then we get an image post disaster, and then we compare the two. Mm. So uh, with with this math, eh, there is no augmentation. Eh? Yeah, then it is what it is. It is what it is. But I know that there is a difference between houses and home homesteads or households. So um, 
the number so the of houses are 65 maybe six or seven people might have been living in one house that's what you're saying yeah families families, families. Ah, yes so families living in the one house yeah i think that's what oh, talking about more if than I one family it, living in one house yes so you all you can have uh the way you ha can have a boys quarter and then you have yeah. and then you also have a situation where there were tenants on a block yeah and then you also have what we call the kawenjas eh? mm. uh, the the english word is a bit rough eh? scavengers mm. eh? those people who dig out that rubbish do, do dig out things to recycle yeah. those are very hard to account are, are they part of a 374 displaced persons or those are the ones whose houses those don't live there they ah, just come to yes scavenge to scavenge yeah and are there some of those lost that that <laughs> are there any the, the word is kawenjas uh we can stick to what uh yeah. is known and the question is are they are they ivan yes. they 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 are, are there any uh who are unaccounted for of those uh Kawenjas. yes actually their number is not known because the they are the majority and they may not be known what what mm -hmm. you have to realize is there are people who have left their villages people there and between ten thousand to twenty five thousand a day so there are people who have left their homes and they have not declared where they are they are in in the city trying to make it mm -hmm. and there's no one to claim that this person is missing some of them don't even have a permanent home they stay they use the night to be on top of those trucks and then go and look for rubbish wow. out to recycle so we cannot say people are completely eliminated actually if you go there though you need permissions you're going to discover that <coughs> the stench of of a human being mm. of human beings is beginning to catch up with that area very sad so but is there some research going on to find out how many of those could have disappeared i know there are a number of efforts but the idea was report missing people if you're missing someone mm. but we cannot eliminate the idea that there are people there who no one is accounting for <coughs> thank you that's uh ivan bamoyana a scholar He's an Earth Observation Researcher at Makere University. Bwana uh, Kaija, I'm pleased you are tucking into Mandazi and tea. Here we are very safe. You don't need to bring your chapati in the pocket. Mm. India so, did. <laughs> she came with her chapati. She came. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. So, uh, Benjamin Katana. Um, that area is an NUP area. What reports do you have? Uh, of course, it's very unfortunate that we are dealing with a tragedy of such magnitude that uh, we are talking about very many people dead under the rubble of rubbish. And uh, so far, what I have gathered is that most of the people, first of all, is that it's an, you'd call, it's like a landing site. He has mentioned the Kawenjas, people who have come from different places to come and uh, make a living from dealing with the, the waste and things of that nature that most of the people so far the bodies that have been recovered they, they are people that came from distant places and indeed they have been I, I was speaking to one of the leaders in the area he says nobody has been buried in that area most of them are people that came from a different place which also co uh, speaks to what he was talking about that we may not even be able to establish how many people were there at the time because many came from different places to go in addition to those who live there there are those who had just come to work but of course the bigger question is about waste management the conversation about waste management because uh while the 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 researcher mr bamanyan has talked about nature responding but nature also responds to activities and we have seen in black and white the warnings from the research 
that was published by Makere University from the warnings that were issued by the director at KCCA that this was a disaster in waiting. There, there are problems that are local in terms of leadership of KCCA. But waste management, the debate about waste management is now a global debate. But unfortunately in Uganda, it's not a conversation that is being given a lot of attention. Because if we are to talk about waste management, then it even starts at household level. And, and it becomes very easy when there is separation. You know, the biodegradable waste is separated from the non-biodegradable. Because if, for example, the, the bottles and the plastics and the rest were somewhere else, the Kawengers, maybe that day would have not been at the landfill. They would have been where they can find those non-biodegradable, uh, 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 yes. And, and so that conversation requires leadership. The leaders need to start a conversation and don't leave it to the academicians and the technocrats in the boardrooms to talk about what can be done because it's a global problem of waste management. Uh, number two, at the national level, we have been grappling with issues like Cavera, the plastic, uh, the non-reusable plastics. There have been attempts to make the law. In fact, the uh, even statutory and Abdu here and his team at Parliament have done a, a good job regarding that aspect. But in terms of implementation, it has remained a problem. The other aspect is to do with the management of affairs at KCCA and what they, pri uh, they prioritize. Because these are warnings. I saw that what they required, because that landfill had gone past its capacity maybe over 10 years ago, what they required to operationalize the one in Dune was about $6 billion. I have seen them conduct activities that take more than $6 billion. It was a matter of making it a priority. I'm also told that there is land they acquired in Obosiro which they acquired and it was vacant but because of some unseriousness some people came and occupied it now they can't use it because there is a legal battle with the people who came subsequent to the purchase of the land so the prioritization but also it speaks to negligence by the authorities at KCCA but it, that, has also, that also has a relationship with the power dynamics in the country that the, the leaders don't feel accountable. Anything goes. It, there will be a conversation about it. After a week, there will be something new. Nobody will be held accountable. So that's why people find the comfort not to do what they are supposed to do because they know, after all, it will not attract any <coughs> punitive action. But also to realize that these modern challenges, because with urbanization, with growth in numbers of people that live around the cities, questions to do with things like waste are questions that must be handled. They cannot be wished away. So even the leadership, when they are appointing people to run these offices, they should have this in mind that if I'm appointing Kaija to be executive director of KCCA, what is his expertise? What is his history of excellence in dealing with whatever they have been dealing? Is there a competitive process through which the executive director, because KCCA would put up, say, an advert and say we are looking with someone with experience and expertise in these areas, and then there's a competitive process and a person with a record of excellence emerges. But because the appointing authority is interested in other <coughs> things, he just picks anybody. They say, oh, the, the person has a degree, has a master's degree. He's a friend. Yeah, he's a friend, he's a cadre. Then the person is appointed. And uh, some of these things, they are not, are not given a lot of attention because even the person's uh, orientation is not in that direction. The... The other aspect, of course, is when you look at, the, for example, uh, the management of the city, 
you look at the ministers that are appointed because the idea when we are moving from the old of having KCC with the mayor running the show to the creation of city authority with the management led by the executive director and, his, and her team or his team and then ministers representing the central government the idea was that we want streamline management of the city because the city is the face of the country and things of that nature but when you look at our friends that are running the city you and i don't like discussing individuals but you'll forgive me when you look at the ministers for kampara city hajat minsa and chofato gavi i don't know what experience they have in management or in providing strategic leadership of a strategic institution as kcca is so the in my view this tragedy that happened is a product of questions of governance and political mismanagement of the country where excellence and merit and the the integrity of the people and service to the people is is not treated as a priority but politics is given a priority over service and of course the feeling that you know the the, the leadership is not accountable to the people that breeds impunity and negligence because at the end of the day the people running the city affairs know that their appointment or promotion has got nothing to do with excellence in any case they were not appointed on the basis of that so i i think we need to to see action being taken as i wrap up action okay. being mm -hmm. taken against those who slept on the job of course there are those who against whom action may not be taken because like i have mentioned the problems relate not just to the management of kcc but also management of the country including the head of state but for those that are not covered by immunity under the law like the executive director even if there is no legal action taken for negligence and i know that there are movements in that direction there should be action taken politically we should see heads rolling at kcca because we cannot lose lives largely on account of negligence and business continues as usual okay well i had invited the lord mayor who was unable to come and he sent the deputy uh, ms nyanjira who also is suffering from what you described earlier she couldn't come from my expertise as a native he, doctor yes <laughs> not, as a, not as a medical doctor no no but it says there was a meeting uh, chaired by the first deputy prime minister on Kadaga on 21st uh, August um, and decisions were made. One, all garbage trucks which have been depositing garbage in Kitezi uh, re-channel to Katikolo in Mukono district and Meenvu in Busukuma Nansena municipality. Ministry of Works shall commence uh, works on those roads to access Katikolo and Meenvu and a resettlement plan for displaced residents of Kitezi has been commissioned to be prepared by KCC in conjunction with the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development to relocate from the 200 meter buffer zone at Kitezi landfill to alternative areas <clears throat> and we are cautioned to be extra careful so Mr. Kaija uh, your comments on, on what's happening and what uh, measures going forward. Now, well, thank you, Oscar, for giving me an opportunity and then uh, giving us an expert with uh, worrying information. This very issue. We also have an Kattuntu, who I didn't introduce, he's in the studio. I want uh, to. He has a stern face, thinking about Chitezi. <laughs> and we have someone from uh, Red Cross, the PRO of Red Cross, Irene Nakasita. Most welcome. I want. Mm. Mm. I want to send my condolences to the families mm. of the people who lost their loved ones. And I feel for those who will never know that their loved ones died in that tragedy. In the there are many. Mm. In this country, 
people move from all over the country to come and try out their luck in Kampala. Others with the knowledge of uh, their relatives and others with no knowledge of their relatives. Most especially uh, people of, at, at the base who people call Umuntu Wawansi, for me I call the common man. Most of these Kawenjas, I first interacted with the Kawenja. I was getting out of my home and I found him at the gate and then they told me, this guy sleeps here. So I, I went to him and I asked him, you guy, what do you do? He said, I am a Kawenja. So I said, what do the Kawenjas do? He eh? said, you know, I collect uh, these plastic bottles and, and then sell them. Where do you stay? I have no home. Where do you come from? Mitiana. So I interrogated, I thought he did know Mitiana. We started discussing Cassandra, the gold crisis, and the guy was spot on. Then I read that's where he comes from. Mm. Was, you, was uh, this random survey before the, yes, uh, before the uh, crisis? Yes. Uh, do you have a phone? He doesn't have a phone. So it means that even his relatives do not know what actually this guy is doing. A week before this tragedy, we are driving to Nagarama to check on our colleagues that were abducted by Ms. M7 from Kenya and we are put there and now charged with, uh, with, with uh, terrorism. So I was with uh, Honorable Aflo Gutu. We looked at that hill, we, we called it a hill. Said, I think next time we need to name this hill. <laughs> yes, we called it a hill. A hill that with no name. Mm. So I was like, I looked at it at the economic line of thinking. So there is a lot of opportunity in this West that nobody seems to look at and to care. But you see, when you have a regime of dealers, you know, for the last 40 years, people do not succeed in this country because they had work. They had working, or oh, they are creative, or oh, they, you know, they, they have uh, enough qualifications. You only need to have a few connections know who so and so uh, have a, an expert in writing proposals and you'll, and, and, you'll, and, and you'll make money. But in, in serious countries, if you went to just nearby Ethiopia, they are making a lot of money from this West. If he told you I thought he was going to go that line, people who have looked at this West, they tell you the West in Ikitezi can give you power that can take care of Wakiso and Ruel and you're sorted. But you see, even the energy sector, there are those who take it as a deal. It is theirs, nobody must benefit. I visited uh, one of our leaders in Ruel. She was using biogas from cow dung. So I was asking her, why don't you use it for lighting? Say the first thing they told me, you must not put on bulbs. So you must still keep using umeme. <coughs> when you go, the, because I said now in the cattle corridors, you wouldn't need umeme. You would actually need to use the waste of cow dung. But you see, Ugandans at the base are, are very creative. Today, you never see any waste of pills in the markets. They peel them those who are zero grazy come and buy them. When, when they buy them at their farm, uh, urine is a waste that is used in farms. Uh, cow dung is used as manure. So everything that is about the cow is useful. But then you have this waste, which would give you manure in a country where you have a crisis of manure and fake manure. Nobody seems to see this manure. The Kawenja, you wouldn't have these young boys being Kawenjas. It would be a design. And then you would even teach Ugandans, how do you manage your waste, as you said, from home? If you went in Europe, you see people having a basket. This is for a waste that, is, that can de decompose. And this is waste that cannot decompose. It is separated. Eh? But here where they put glasses, you put plastic, you put papers, you, uh, you put those... Uh, so, 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 anyway, we say it is just waste. 
we put to be cut out hey, talk but then now i remember day. i think i i, I yes i i I, there's, I think a few like a month ago we were hosting uh, the ed of kampala and we we're asking her about the strategic plan of kcca and they don't have it they they, they have they no have. They, she was on this program mm. and i was listening i think uh my senior leader who was on that very program oh it's even who, who reminded he said they don't have it okay. so now for them eh, they are like uh, the jua carries a jua carry <laughs> is always a crisis manager one crisis with this now if eventually now we are following this tomorrow another one will come of cholera we shall now be following cholera eh? not knowing the cholera comes from this very you know this, this very crisis so there is a serious problem in this country but you see one time i was uh, going to visit a patient one of our colleagues was a lawyer. He eventually died that very day. As I was getting in, I found Dr. Olive Cobb Singer getting out. So I asked Doctor, Doctor, how is the patient? She told me the patient is suffering from a situation of mild organ failure. I didn't ask, I thought I knew that English. <laughs> then I went, the machines were breaking in about three minutes, the guy was dead. So in the evening I was asking, Doctor, what did you mean? He said, uh, the lungs have stopped. Uh, this has stopped, the heart has stopped. So it, it's actually, it's, the person is actually clinically dead. So we are living in a country that nothing works. The other somebody was saying the only thing that works in this country is Joshua Kiptigay. Mm -hmm. Now I have heard the minister is asking him, please don't retire from the, from the track competitions because they are doing to re yes, 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 you are saying he's retiring to go to marathon. They say it's the only thing that works. <laughs> the day that guy was starting to run when he gave us gold, the commentator said, this guy comes from a very beautiful country. To me, that was a very big statement, a very beautiful country, which would be a country of opportunity. Because this is a man-made crisis that comes from employing people or deploying people, not because they are competent. Achinua Achebe said, the problem with Nigeria is that there is no office in this country where we have our best. When I heard him speak, I thought he would be working in some ministry. Yes, I <laughs> but then you would find eh, eh, those that he salutes for are wannabes. Eh? So because you're son of so-and-so, you're brother of so-and-so, you are so-and-so, you, you support so-and-so, you saw now the other day you saw the crisis mm -hmm. that happened where where you have an ambassador who puts a casino in uh, in an, an embassy that's how this country Mr. works Mr. if you went to kcca mm -hmm. you look for people who are in charge eh, of this but and you find i'm a social scientist i, I, I you even find a lawyer because in this in this town when things fail to make ends eh, you'll always grab on on any kind of opportunity mm. so this is where okay. we are we can only yeah. get out of this kind of situation when we decide to look at Uganda as a project, not look as individuals with selfish motive. Thank you. That's Mr. Kaija with what sounded like a rant. At least you've gotten it out of your system. And uh, it is true, Ivan uh, Bamwena is being praised. One, one uh, listener said, the most modest expert I have ever had. Lydia, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, Stezi, the, the own ways forward, KCCA has uh forwarded what i read out um were these long overdue you know you know <laughs> this is, is a tough story but let me uh, like we did last saturday uh continue to pay tribute to the the lives lost but also with the families uh, that have lost relatives others don't even know uh have not yet recovered their relatives they are still waiting and uh, i heard that uh, in the course of the week the exercise of executing the dead stopped because i think there was either rain or they were stopping some water flowing from chitetika and they had to first of all work out the management of it otherwise the mach the trucks were not working but that has a big toll to the relatives who are waiting uh, for their loved ones to put them to rest. It's very difficult to conclude the morning session of life before you bury. You, you want to see the dead uh, and put them to rest so that there is a sign of a grave somewhere. 
and that as long yeah closure as long as they have not recovered their dead they remain in that state and you can imagine in the African culture, when you hear someone has died, you begin a vigil, a funeral. Mm. So when will that vi- vigil close? Yeah. yeah? And, and who's looking after them? Yeah, and, and, and then there are issues of logistics. And so for those families, it's actually very tough. Uh, because I had the police spokesperson saying they had put a, as it, I think, a, a stop or some time, then maybe they will resume. But there must be a closure. But even for those families, uh, whose bodies will not have been recovered like forever now how are they going to conclude the morning without a grave without a, f- a form of funeral so those are the, some of the issues that uh, are very difficult to to stand with or to even discuss mm. the management of uh, waste is very important because even without Chitezi it should have come yesterday because there are issues of climate change, they are part of the planning of the country. We have a whole ministry of environment. There are issues of waste management, but also livelihood. The ministry of health. These are issues of health. How do people settle near garbage? Uh, what, the, even without chitezi happening, there are issues of cholera. There are issues of diseases that come out of living in an, uh, an unacceptable environment. So I, I don't understand. Now we are here thanking Red Cross. You know, we are so vulnerable that when we, we, we have such problems, like where I come from in Imbale, Bududa, people stay there. Then when mudslides come, they are buried. Then he, he, people come, then we begin thanking rescuers and people like Red Cross who bring you some blanket here, some uh, posho. And we, we, we are such a vulnerable community and victims. And there is a chance to really preempt like the warning, there's so many early warnings that came before Chitezi. We are embarrassed. It's a shame. Maybe we should have begun the media campaign when we heard about the early warning. Maybe. So that those, there is name and shame to say there is a warning about Chitezi and KCC, why are you quiet? It's very painful to see people who should have saved lives now taking religious leaders to pray for the chitezi there was a service there they've taken a catering it's a mockery you take a catering service to serve food what about serving food and and all this i mean it's the and event with and we leading upside down things i mean i can't understand this i actually develop good pimples when i see some of the actions people are supposed to have uh, preempted a disaster they come and become so good and even spend more when the disaster has happened huh? mm. can you imagine those families if they had been given five million shillings before they died i don't know whether i'm making sense but now the money appears the food appears the services appear after because the uh, cartoon to a, a, a nice dua or service should have happened so that people can move before they die. So, so Oscar, when you we come here and then you, we all lament and sound very remorseful or feeling with the people, it's it's painful because these are really avoidable. I listened to the Lord Mayor and other people in the leadership of KCCA zeroing the whole problem of Chitezi to lack of money. If we brought the budget of KCCA here every financial year including the revenue collection they make locally from the private uh managers of the state because they also collect revenue you are a collects revenue they also have a budget and looked at their priorities they should all have gone home because their priorities do not speak to the needs of the people that one i can say without any contradiction but because they are Priorities are also upside down. No wonder they can afford catering service at a funeral, but they could not afford the same money service provider to save a life. Mm. So I think uh, I had someone saying, you know, it is cadres that are deployed. Please, I want to speak here on this capital gang that we have Ugandans, whether you call us cadres or not, who can do a good job in these offices. It's just because 
Uh, 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 no, not over Lucas. It's just because I, uh, maybe the, we, the opportunities are not competitive enough because Uganda, whether you are NRM, whether you are FDC, whether you are no planning, we have good guns out there, but they have not been having a good opportunity. And they don't have to be cadres. Sometimes the consideration is not even cadres. It, there are other considerations. It's not even competence because if it is a competence, there is a reason why some of us will not be heading big corporations of the country. I mean, if you want me to show you my CV, <laughs> <laughs> are you questioning my cadership? I don't. So, 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 really, the issue, the issue is, the issue is, no, the issue is, it's not about having cadres. It's about commitment and being accountable. Because when, sometimes when you say cadres, it's, it's like you are saying everybody that is leaning to NRM is incompetent, does not care. Because this, this is an, an aspect of being care. care. Because I, I even think to be a leader in KCC, even if you didn't go to school, if you cared and you had empathy, you know, if you don't have empathy as a leader, you are empty. Okay. You are empty. Mm. You have no business in positions of leader. You don't have to have gone to school. But if you care about people and you are empathetic to people, you can deliver a good job even without qualifications, even without being a cadre. So that, that's my contribution. Okay. And I think mm. it's a shame. And we should do better. And we should not work for cameras. Let people get down to work and know that life matters. And we should learn to deliver and be accountable okay. to life. Abdul. Pick it up from there. About cadres? Uh, no, no. I don't have an opinion about it. <laughs> about it is the landfill <laughs> collapse. Mm. Okay. Oscar, m maybe we need to take this conversation a little bit higher. Uganda is, by law, a one planning area. We have what a ministry, mm. fiscal planning. We have a ministry called lands, housing, and urban development. Mm. Let us split it. When we talk about urban development, we are talking about all the cities now. We are talking about uh, municipalities. We are talking about town councils and trading centers. I want my brother here who has been properly described by one of our listeners to do some research and see what we are doing about planning for urban areas. Look at that ministry of, uh, of lands, housing, and urban development. And tell me whether there is any urban development strategy or plan in place. Look at the resources that have been allocated for that particular ministry. You'll find that actually they are only given money for wages. Mm -hmm. Meaning they wake up every day, they are supposed to be planning for this country, but they're just seated on their desks. And if you don't have a national planning strategy for urban areas, for heaven's sake, Chitezi is just one other thing going to happen. All urban areas in the whole world, cities are grappling with the issues of infrastructure, housing, food, water, sewage. You tell me who is planning. Let us look at the figures of Kampala. In 2014, we were 1.6 million people. 2019, around 1.9. 2020, around 2 million. 2024, we are around 4 million people. <coughs> Who is planning in terms, for example, of water we are going to consume? In terms of the sewage, which we are producing and has to be disposed of, the infrastructure. Not only Kampala. Go to Jinja, go to Masaka, go to Mbarara. Because the focus is now on Kampala and accident has happened. Look at the leadership in charge of urban planning in this country. And... and uh, you don't have to be defensive, Lydia, uh, because to me, your argument was the same 
Kaija was making, mm. only that maybe use the word cadres, but you are saying there are many people who do not qualify but mm. are holding these positions. To be fair, it was Katana who said it. Mm. Okay, but I use the cadre. For me, I use the. Uh, I you, not use the, but I, I explained that all, all of them are mm. talking about it. Mm. But they are making the same point yeah. that we are not deploying our best mm. to do the job. And we can lament here. We hope when we come here every Saturday, there is somebody out listening. Say, look, here, things should be done yeah. better and differently. Let us look at the infrastructure. The infrastructure of Kampala, as it was 10 years ago, it is today. The population has doubled. What do you expect? And there are basics which we should be handling. For example, sort, for example sorting out this uh, solid waste. Yes. Very, very basics, Oscar. But you put plastics, diapers, sanitary something. You had all this money just put together and then you... I mean, it's just a little bit disgusting. Having said that, to me, everything starts... Or they said the back starts and ends with the politics of the country, yes. But there are people who call themselves experts. There are people who call themselves technical rats, mm. and actually they are paid mm. to be doing that. Yeah. Oscar, you tell me when have we ever had a discussion? Oh, the city has ever had a discussion about solid waste management. Mm. Politicking, 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 politicking. Day in, day out. Look at what goes on at Kampala Capital City Authority. Mm. Every day they are talking about politics. Mm. Every day, the fight you are having is about politics. Even when there is a crisis like this, it will end up politicking. Actually, talking about politics is okay, but you end up you end up politicking, which is certainly different from talking about politics. So, if we don't really go back to the basics, to the table, and see how to manage this country, and sometimes you wonder there, there is a friend of mine who was called Kajimo he once stood for mayorship of Camp of Entebbe I don't know whether you remember him he had proposed that oh. we go back, to, we should hand over this country to the colonials yeah. <laughs> you remember that story? Mm. and he was ridiculed mm. but let me tell you one thing Oscar you grew up in Kasese Kasese then Kilembe Kibem, mm. Kilembe Kilembe mm. Just look at the, how organized Kasese was. Just go in any mm. country town, mm. whether Tororo, mm. Mbali, yes. Aru, Wagulu, Lira, mm. including places like Moroto. Yes. There is a housing estate, senior, the, what they use called senior quarters, junior quarters. There is a public boma. There are places for schools. Every town, there is a golf course. Just imagine all these up, uh, up country towns, they have golf courses. Mm. Go to Masaka Golf Course. Ginger. Do you know? It has been parceled out. Mm. People are building, mm. and uh, but, but this was supposed to be a recreational facility, knowing very well that you are going to have people in these areas who should be playing football, playing golf, and so on. It has happened before, so we are not reinventing the wheel. It has been here before. Mm. Look at every district. We have too many mushrooming districts now. Trading centers being called municipalities and so on. No planning at all. Nothing, nothing. Even, let's now come to Metropolitan Kampala. I live you, in you, 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 you first pause there. We stop for a quick break and maybe give you some water to calm down and we continue the discussion. Welcome back from the break. I am Oscar Semwe. I'm Soke, and we're still discussing the sad events of a Chitezi landfill collapse. Uh, Abdi, you were concluding yes, your I submission. Yes, I was concluding that, you know, what can happen yeah, in, it's all about uh, planning and urban development and housing. I said it is Seguku, as I was saying, but ju just look at the sort of housing in where I stay. There is one of, I don't know how many billions of shillings. There is a one of 100,000. We all stay in the same place. No, no, you know, plan is to look at those people who have capacity to have this sort of housing can put up uh, their dwelling places, this and so on. Like it happens in all other developed cities. 
here today just imagine do we do we have this uh, i don't know that department in kcca that approves you know building plans and so on what mm. do they take into consideration when they are approving housing uh building plans like the ones bamwena talked about yeah. just a few meters from the landfill yeah, yeah how how can that happen uh, uh, kalina how, how can that happen <laughs> that's a landfill is there and just next to it you have a storage house and so on you said the landfill was still far it's in wakiso no, you know, it's uh, in wakiso but you know gentleman who was in case as uh, who was in charge of uh, uh, physical planning who had failed the interview becoming a physical planner in ruengo <laughs> and the same bubble, but was made director of uh, planning, uh, of, planning the of the city. <laughs> is, is this factual? Uh, yeah, it is. Yes, that okay. guy died with a, uh, in I an was, accident in Marana Agaba. 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 It is hap it <laughs> happened. It's factual. <laughs> and now, by now, Oscar, as I go off the microphone, we'll be talking about the Greater Kampala Metropolitan in terms of planning. But Wakiso is doing its own thing. Yeah. Uh, Mukono is doing mm. its own mm. thing. The, the capital city is doing its own thing. I see just total chaos. Mm. Total chaos. Mm. We need to think better, really. Okay, there's uh, 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 on X, uh, formerly Twitter, mm. listeners, look out for Tony Mukangura. Mm. He's there. He's written, uh, he wrote an article on how to reverse Uganda's collapsed urban planning. It's Absolutely. Like you're you're reflecting it. exactly what you're talking about. Tony, like we will, need to do it. Tony Mukangra. It's at Tony Mukangra. Look him up. Very good article there. It's a, a good read. And that's what Abdul has been ranting about. Just, you know, it's, it's, it's quite annoying, really, because these are basics. Mm. Um, so, Irene Nakasita, or PRO Red Cross, you came late to Mualimu's class. Did you come late to Chitezi as well? <laughs> no, we need to congratulate them, really. You've yeah. done a pretty good job Thank for you. us. We are happy. Mm. The public's really happy mm. with the Uganda Red Cross. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Well we done. When, when, so what have you been doing, we Uganda Red Cross? Mm. <laughs> you, you, you will have to. I know you've uh, raised your voice. Please. Let's send you some star cafe chai and, and samosa. Uh, thank you, uh, Oscar. We actually didn't get late on site. Uh, we were there in time, only that uh, the planning, you've just been discussing planning of the place. Access was a little difficult. Accessing the people, accessing the houses, accessing the landfill was a little difficult because, one, how people are settled in the area. When you realize, uh, I, I've been mentioning about this separately, that uh, people had to sacrifice their space and houses to be demolished so that the excavators could, could actually also... Karin, mean, you're going to have to be louder. Mm. Mm. Can you imagine that? Oh, mm. wow. Yes. <laughs> I beg your pardon, people had to... Yes. People had to sacrifice their houses so that they could uh, they could allow way for the responders access. to access the site. To demolish. Yeah, yeah they had to demolish. So Because um, there was no access to get no access place. to that to, to the, to the place. Now, you've just been talking about so many small houses built in the area very close to the landfill, and that was the situation. So you could hear people crying, calling for help, but reaching them was difficult. And, and you can't also get this responder because they have to save a life to also risk theirs at the expense of pulling out somebody. So at some point it was quite difficult, but uh, well, the 14 were rescued. Like, like you had in the statistics of the, the person who was introducing, the 14 were saved. But then the 35 bodies so far retrieved could not be saved. And, and I must painfully say that it may not be possible to get everyone who was buried. And after how many days? We are talking of about 10 to 13 days around there. So, and you know the garbage is hot down there, it burns. I remember a certain lady who was picked out with no skin, yeah? So a body decomposes after some days. So it's true that we may painfully not be able to get out everyone because of where the body was, for example. If the body is somewhere where it's hard to send there people who are alive to pick, it may be hard to get them from there. So painfully, in emergency response, some places may have to be uh, maybe declared mass graves 
because you cannot yeah. pick out all the bodies and also uh, not yeah, being the problem able is they don't even know them so you don't even know them that's what i was going to go to that we don't even know them because leave alone the houses that were already there so you know there was a pastor's house here the, there were those you called them when i inch him to our see those who wake up every day to kawenja mm. now the kawenja who wakes up to go and pick uh, bottles or pick garbage or sort garbage and and has no house in that area you may not be able to account for them so those ones but of course uh, for us as humanitarian workers the best we can do is say we will try our best and at best what we can do is what we deliver to you so where we are not able to we should be able to tell you that here we will not be able to but then let me go to camp management quickly because now all the people who are saved alive and are not in hospital are living with us at the camp i want to correct because, the figure because they have nowhere to go yeah, I'll, I'll share differently why they are there. Okay. Uh, somebody read a figure of 300 something. 375. Uh, That's from yes, the Yes, so here. exactly. So with the verification exercise, I'll put the figure now to 293 people at the camp right now. Mm. Because every other day we, we, we verify what the people that we have on ground. But also because of different... So where the, have the others gone? That's a and that's what I'm, I'm sharing yeah. right mm. now. Because of the different circumstances, people develop coping mechanisms. Keeping them in the camp is not the best. If you have a relative, if you have means, yeah? Some of those people were tenants there. There, yeah, some can go back to the yeah, village. Yeah. Some can can go and rent. Those who have capacity. There's a lady who was telling me, yes, this happened, but I still have my job in town, so I run to town and work and come back and sleep here. Oh. So she was asking me to add her more relief. Uh, we, we have those who have relatives who would prefer that their people go and live with them than keeping them in the camp. I, I will be honest with you: being in the camp is not the best option. Eh? You're used to sleeping on a bed. For us, we are giving you a tarpaulin. And maybe when we get mattresses, we are giving you a mattress. But maybe you want to do your comfort. You can afford a bed. So you may want to go rent a music over 100K if you can afford it. Put there a bed and start life all again. What about things like toilets, water? Yes, those ones we have, but because it's an emergency phase, you will not get the first class toilet or water. So what we, what, what we give are uh, makeshift, uh, makeshift kind of arrangements. So you'll have a mobile toilet. You may not be comfortable with it, but that's the best we can give you. Right now, we are being accommodated at, uh, at a church land or school land. We are at Chitezi Primary School. They are play field. So we, we, the, we cannot put their permanent structures. This is not our land. It's for the school, you know. So everything we are putting there is temporary. It may not be the best for the human being that you would wish to have, but there are provisions to help them really thrive and survive amidst the current situations. I want to take this opportunity to thank Ugandans who have been so generous and please clap I, I hope the studios people can hear that we are clapping to for you Ugandans who have sacrificed a lot and given towards uh, the, the well-being of the people every other day Oscar we have trucks coming in we have individuals walking driving people bringing someone can give you even a chigato that is very old and you're sure not going to give it to anyone but they have moved the journey they have walked maybe from Busega to come to Chitezi to deliver something every other day we we have sacks of clothes so that people do not go naked yeah we, we have many children we have lactating mothers we have corporate companies that have come through to support i thank mtn they gave us a hundred million i thank absa bank they gave us a hundred million and then there are others who are giving us items in kind and all these things are making a contribution to the well-being of the people that we are housing the water is there kcca uh, brings a water bowser so we have tanks there where people can draw the water we have temporary bath shelters that we put there we have temporary uh, moby toilets that are there. Basically, it's an emergency phase. I cannot tell you it's the best. And so that's why I said those who can develop coping mechanisms quickly can actually go and find life elsewhere. But then maybe w w what is the plan? Yeah, because you may ask me what the plan is for the people. For us at best as humanitarian workers, we, we, we can offer help as long as the camp is still there and as long as government has not said stop. So what we can do if we run out of support, we call upon new Ugandans yeah. to come and join there's, us. There's, there's a rotary uh, response coming up and I've yeah. seen 
some of our people in the younger ones, Rotary clubs, they are also gearing up. Actually, many Rotary clubs mm. have come through also yes. as, as individual clubs to give, and, and I really want to appreciate the president of Chitezi, the Rotary Club of Chitezi herself was there on, on day two, that was Sunday. She spent the whole day with us there trying to know what are the needs, what are the needs, and, and saying these are our people of Chitezi, we need to come through to mm. their rescue. So the Rotarians have also been doing a and, very good job. Irene, show. finally from you, what about the risk of disease it is high but like i said in an emergency setup there are things that you can't avoid because it's been raining uh like uh, mama wanyoto was talking about garbage and exposure to 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 rain and everything so if 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 the if the garbage has water where does it end up where does it go to so if there are no gazetted water channels that water lands into people's homes for us where we're staying at the camp we've tried to manage the waterways and make sure we pave way for the water to go through so that it doesn't come into the camp the tents that where the shelters the shelters themselves but on day one we had that problem the it rained heavily and water came straight to our tent and we didn't have anything to do. Yeah. But the good thing, there were not many people. Day one, we had only 35 people. So we, we braved through that rain painfully. My CEO left that place that day at 3 a.m. in the morning. So I want to give kudos to him for leading by example. Um, but now... We are trying to do what we call hygiene promotion, sensitizing these people, because we are living with people who have different backgrounds, and we need to help them know that if we don't manage disposal of certain things very well, we are bound to uh, trouble. to, to mm. trouble and also getting exposed. So, the only challenge, Koska, now uh, a few pneumonias among children because it's been cold, cold, and also we don't know where some of these people slept for the first two three days of, of, of the incident because we didn't have them at the camp, but now they kept growing in number, but more children coming through. So when you look at our health tent and also the referrals we are making, they are around children who got exposed to I think colds and also getting pneumonia. Then of course some pregnant mothers, lactating mothers, those are special cases, people with disabilities. We are trying to make sure they are catered for better and in the best way that we can mm -hmm. so that they, they don't fill any gaps and spaces within their, their well-being. Irene Nakasita, PRO Red Cross and Ivan Bamoyana researcher you have enabled us to, to have a very saddening show um <laughs> this, 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 reality uh, yes reality yeah. not but close. we still give hope oscar we have hope. because mm. we, we want to ugandans to know that uh emergencies come but if they are well managed people really get comfort we quickly through. we yeah. pull through and also if if the government can and for me lessons learned and and i want to just mention this that yes somebody talked of budgets there are some things we can do with budgets there are those we cannot there are those we can do even without budgets like the proper planning and the prioritization but when budgets are allocated where do these funds go so for me the the, the, the issues of disaster preparedness uh, response and management should be prioritized well, also things simple things like service delivery like exactly mm -hmm. and also holding ourselves accountable <laughs> yes. because if, if if for example mtn has given me a hundred million I, I should go back to them and help them see where their money has gone yeah. so helping our leaders to be accountable and also to make sure our resources are channeled to the priorities mm -hmm. of the people for me disaster so, preparedness so. i would come off the mic and mention that uh, yeah. pe people in ministry of those the budget people who manage the budgets assign funds to these people so that they can do their job better and in time they, they, we have assigned by law the Public Finance Management Act a portion of our budget specifically for disaster. Mm. A yeah. portion, mm. a percentage. Mm. A percentage. Yes. But most of the time, mm. I think disasters first occur okay. and then we start they, running they, around even for the budget. Even, even before the disaster, I want to recruit you because if you've not, we've not had water for four days, you know, this, this. So service delivery is also an important thing. You know, we don't have a, a collapse or anything, but let's have good service. Like Ivan Bamwena, you conclude on the technical side, and I'll get Abdul to conclude on the political side, oh. i.e., what are they going to do? Can they, can they put this as a big agenda item in their regional movements? <laughs> 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 they actually, you, you actually need to know what goes on up country, mm. other than yeah. this Kampala thing yeah. where people... It's not on the topic, I... It wasn't on the topic, what I just wanted to throw it in a Ivan, I think for me, I want to, to drive to a bigger picture that we are missing. Uh, what we re need to realize is that when a disaster, primary disaster occurs, secondary disasters follow. <laughs> and that's one point we are not looking at.
when you have to realize that garbage or waste that we are talking about uh, has we call it a landfill a landfill and not a dump site because it is engineered part of that engineering means they put a lining down and to trap that leachate that comes from that waste now we are talking about 22 acres of waste that has spilled out now it has no lining down and it spilled into a marshy valley oh. what you realize is that that leachate is now coming through direct into that marsh valley. Spell, spell leachate. Leachate is... Uh, you, you, need, yeah. you need to use English sometimes, Ivan. <laughs> okay. Let me explain leachate first. Okay. Leachate is that black water that comes out of r the waste. Mm. It's as if you're Sorry, washing the waste, mm. that liquid that comes out, that black liquid. It's quite toxic. It has heavy metals in it, like lead. And uh, so you're of saying it is now entering now seeping 22 directly. acres yes. going down into the water space. Now, here is the thing. Up, because it fell in the valley upstream, it has caused flooding. Uh, the water can no longer flow. In, there was, in between, there was a drainage that uh, was taking out, that was channeling the storm water and that leachate. Now, that drainage currently leads to Walufumbe stream. <coughs> Walufumbe stream flows from Chitezi via Kumbuzi into Chanja, into Kulambilo area. Now, we used to take rubbish to Chitezi. And now they are giving us back something. So we are doing a cycle. Mm. This is where I see... I could disagree more. <laughs> I see uh, uh, something coming up that we are not really being attentive to. Sure? Yes, so now we are, this water can seep into underground water and surface water sources. So people in that area uh, need... If, if you're not very hungry, eh, mind what you're eating on the street. Eh? Mind especially fruits in that area. Uh, yes, it becomes uh, a big, big issue. And then we also need to realize that, uh, like uh, the Red Cross person has stated, uh, the response issue. Response is not an event. It's a process. That's why you've had instances of uh, if you respond to it as if it's an event, take blankets. You realize that blankets are not what is suitable in that area or suitable to that particular process. I know there's there's a time the Prime Minister went to give off blankets and I think they had to reject them and say, this is, what is this that you've supplied to our people? And so I think in terms of response, even when the warnings come out, now I want to, what do you do when we give you warnings as researchers? Sometimes you have no budget and KCCA may, may probably have had no budget, but what is wrong with warning the people that like she has said, people have coping mechanisms. Uh, worst case, warn them. Like, this is going to come back. <coughs> they will, yes, they will find ways of coping, and they will be able to deal with it. And so in this phase of now, what do we do? There are ways to manage rubbish. Always, you can incinerate it, you can make a landfill, you can composite where you... you mix rubbish with something and then get a, a, a new material out of it then you can recycle it but you're going to find that we still have separation issues right from the household we are not separating our rubbish and then we have a lot of cover if you go to Chitez the biggest composition that is uh, failing that place is that cover and so we have a duty to educate our people you see how we have the national anthem even in nursery the things that impact our country need to be integrated into our education if a child grows up having a mindset towards waste management it becomes much easier here it's very normal for someone to be very educated driver bends lower that window and throw rubbish Okay, and it's very normal for the uptown people to drive their car, very posh car, stop somewhere and throw out rubbish in the okay. middle of the road. So what we are saying is we need to educate our people even on start from matters home. like thank you, thank start you, from Ivan. and even reduce rubbish. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Abdul? 
what yeah. will the politicians do going forward? You know, because you say society is managed by politicians, mm. uh, you see. So at the end of the day, it, it's a big challenge. And I think this is what Lydia was talking about, accountability for the politicians who take these decisions, whether at Kampala Capital State Authority, whether at a national level, at the ministry level, because uh, according to our constitution, Kampala is under central government management. And that's why it has two ministers. You know, this is the time when they should not be talking politics. This is the time when they'll be talking about the issues that affect people who live and, 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 and dwell in Kampala. It is. And let me tell you one thing about they should not talk about money. Mm. Why? Because we give them money and they budget that money themselves. So they should get their priorities correct. They should get their priorities correct because when parliament is appropriating money we are looking at their work plan and they say well this is what we want this is what we want this is what we want we may not give them all the money they need but it's okay you've been given 800 billion so please budget within this and they should get the priorities correct okay uh we change subjects uh we go to fdc Mr. Kaija, Harold Kaija is Interim Secretary General of FDC. I will also add for my own Katonga. Uh, so, <laughs> when, when, when Harold uh, uh, Kaija says that uh, the, these people appointed and people are, that are not qualified, mm. and you point at the other people who are not qualified, for us we are looking at you, Katonga, and yeah. we are looking at the qualifications of Katonga people breaking mm. away. Uh, are you cognizant that maybe FDC is not looking good at the moment? Looking at your recent proposals mm. of dissolving the party, uh, starting another party, or maybe joining another party? Mm. Uh, thank you, Oscar. I would agree that uh, the resolutions you are talking about are meant to fix the very problem you are talking about. Of saying if this, uh, it does not... It, does not look good. If an organization does not look good, the best way is to wind, up, wind it up. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> the best because eh, the, the framers of the constitution of the FDC... You are going with the mantra of eh, if a horse is dead, it is dead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the framers of the, of the FDC constitution, which are honorable cartoon, is very aware of they put an article. I'm not aware of. I'm one of them. Exactly. Yeah. The, one of the who wrote the, it. Or the, the, one of the people who wrote, wrote it. it. Yes. Where really, there would be a, a point where that uh, if the party does not serve the purpose for which it was formed, they put an article 36 mm, that, that says it, 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 it can be wind up, and they even put up processes in which it can be wind up, and that is. Uh, the article there is a legal word the user have forgotten that uh, you come and tap at it and say I think the time is now to pack the FDC the FDC was a party that was created to usher in a democratic change in this country it was created to carry the aspirations of the people of Uganda especially those who are in captivity, those who are marginalized, to see to it, we put a country where their dreams and aspirations are achieved. But today, when you look at the FDC as it is, you do not see any line of hope. You see some people who have arrived who actually believe it is okay? Who believe the status quo does not affect any kind of situation the common man or the ordinary person is facing? In the recent past, I have not had a statement from Najana Ankum that speaks to the people of Uganda. Today, the person at the helm of Najana Ankumbi has become another version of uh, an English Tamale Mirundi with the best card missiles and that is all. whenever you would check the papers what comes from Nigeria Kumbi 
would just be able to attack any other person. Has he described me as well? He has been describing all the leaders. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think one of the reasons eh, he's a little uh, reserved about describing me because I know him pretty well. Uh, 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 Others don't know him. Uh, no, the, you know, there's when you get, I tell you, you know, we have shared a bed. <laughs> We have shared a bed. <laughs> we have shared a bed with him. I know how he thinks. I know how he does the things. He has spoken to me. His mind. Who but you know, this one? the president. Of the the president. The, uh, uh, Mr. Oh, sorry, engineer Patrick uh, Patrick Amriat. So, uh, about two years ago, on the run up to the campaign of 2011, uh, Horrible Ekanya had some financial challenges. And then rent, rent to me some seven to go and fix his financial challenges. Reaching there, they found themselves discussing the FDC. And the big man said, I have something I can, I, I, I can offer you. Mr. Kenya, this is national radio. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Kenya, this is national radio. Yes. So are you stating facts that can be... You, you brought somebody who is... Uh, not an outsider who is an insider who knows how things work. Right. So on reaching there, he was asked for the budget of the FDC. The campaign of uh, the campaign of the FDC, which he went and submitted. Maybe that's not such a bad thing. Eh? <laughs> so should we say the FDC is a sparring partner <laughs> of Mr. Seven? It because has, in boxing, hasn't it happened? Yeah, in boxing, no, in boxing, if you are if you are preparing to have a boxing match, they get your sparring partner to prepare you so that you are good enough to face the fight. The FDC that I know is supposed to be the opponent of the NRM in a boxing ring, not the pattern. So eventually. When they go, the money, the money was not given to a Kenya. It was given to somebody else. Kenya learned about the money after some time. So he, when he was given peanuts, he went to Dr. Vesige and said, you know what? Money. There was money. I was called. I had gone for my problems. Then I learned there was money that they would support some people who are preparing for elections. And that is how we are able to learn about the money. That problem, we tried to fix it for about two, three years until last year when colleagues started doing underhand methods to make sure whoever talks about them is out of uh, the, the institution or the structures of the FDC. The whole of last year, no FDC card was sold. When you are running up to the structure elections, whatever Honorable Kadu will tell you, for anybody to contest for position in the FDC, you must have a card and even to vote. So if your people do not have a current annual card, they can't vote you or they cannot even contest. Hmm. So we went to NEC and said, how can this be? How, how can we put things straight? Eventually, for two months, the party president refused to call NEC. In every morning, we have a WhatsApp group. Honorable Salam Musumba would write when his neck, the party president would never respond. Every morning, religiously, every morning, good morning, colleagues, when his neck. So one day, the secretary for uh, people with disability. Just, Mr. just stop there for a second. We'll remind <coughs> you, one day, the secretary for disability. Mr. Katana, don't smile a lot because even you, your party, Many things have come and disrupted you. Can I even uh, smile? Because, you know, where I come from, uh, in the olden days, when domestic violence was common practice, wisdom, wisdom dictated that when you come across a stick that has been used to beat your co-wife, co you throw it very far. So the problems of uh, FDC or any other... Opposition but, uh, party. Yes. Right. Are problems that concern us. Still around. 
We'll come back from the break. Uh, the most memorable note that came from the break was about who has the stick. So, um, uh, Harold yes. Kaiser, Interim Secretary General, two minutes to conclude mm. that uh, narrative. So, I tell them that that issue became a, a serious issue in the party, whoever was challenging uh, what was happening, even how the methods of work, the party eventually literally packed no neck, no working committee. The president had to so Now, I was telling you, the central of PWD said, now, if the party president cannot invite NEC, for me, let me invite NEC members. We go to headquarters and have a chat. Reaching there, uh, the guys we call Gun the Chiefs, we are all over. He was told, since we're PWD, we are not going to, to do anything to you, but uh, tell your colleagues don't appear. So he called us, guys, if you want your life, don't come to Niger. <coughs> Was that the time you were asked to write your wills? Uh, no, actually, that was after. When, uh, yes, I mean, was, uh, so now, we, now eventually we started to, to mobilize and, uh, you know, they used all their forces, so how they were purging people. And then we said, no, I think we are good, we are better than this. We had never seen the military occupy in The military has always been our opponent. But now you would see guns all over uh, and uh, police wa was taking a side in the FDC. So we decided to go and uh, run around, make consultation. We are supposed to have a delegates conference, which they went and asked Mr. Mukarazi, who was the vice chairperson in the constitution of the FDC, only allows the chairman to call the delegates conference, decide the date and the venue. When the chairman, they saw the chairman was not agree of what was happening, they invited the EC boss. So we challenged them. How can an EC boss call a delegates conference? Now a few weeks, no, actually, when, we, when the matter went to court, they brought a backdated uh, invitation of national of delegates conference, signed by Mr. Mukala Zichibuka who was a vice chair person, and they had forgotten the date they put on. The guy was, in, was, was supposed to, to, to face doctors in a surgery in Nairobi. Then he said, 28th July, you guy, you were, were in a hospital in Nairobi. How did you, how did you sign? Secretary so, General said, you don't think I have money? I can always fly to Nairobi. Ask him, say, mm, a man who is fighting for his life to go and sign. Then who delegated him? Then eventually, you saw those, those battles uh, where eventually were able to manipulate court and uh, have their way. And then eventually, we had a delegates conference of 19 September, which suspended them, that gave us the interim leadership, gave us the responsibility of going down to put structures, so which we have it done was like a the whole of this country. Then, but, but in conclusion, Harold, mm, you, but after putting all those structures, yes, on, but then now you want to close, yes. No, we, we, we know then eh, the next national council we met, we said, Fine, guys, we had a, a legitimate delegates conference. These guys went ahead and had a meeting which they called a delegates conference, chaired by one Mukaraz Chibuka, who is no chairman, but uh, Justice Sekana was very okay with them saying what we are doing was in bad faith. So they gave us about uh, four proposals to go and consult about around the country, which we've been still doing. One, to see to it that uh, if we can still pursue the court case up to the end. We saw the cases of DP and UPC. UPC will be reached up to the Supreme Court and got the verdict on, on their side, but the media could not allow them to access Uganda House. We saw what was, and then we said, now this is an option. That cannot, that cannot lead us anywhere. Then they said, could we go and reconcile with them? Said, what do we reconcile? This one says, M7 is okay to work with. Actually, I, I saw the Secretary General one time on TV saying, if those guys have a problem with M7, it is their business. For us, we have no problem with M7. For us, we do. Then that was an issue. Others said, should we join another party? And, uh, and there was another proposal to form a political party. So went and consulted on those five proposals. On Monday, this week, we had a delegates conference where unanimously uh, the members who were in the delegates conference proposed that we must, one, first of all, one member said, 
and propose that we wind up the FDC. Mm. Because they said the FDC has our values, has our history. Leaving it with the colleagues who do not know the sacrifices we went through to have that party would be suicidal. Then too, they said, we go and form another political party. Three, uh, they, they gave us another mandate who uh, we who have been on the in, in the interim to prepare and uh, to prepare a transitional period to transit from uh, this FDC to the, our next destination. And that's where we are now. The whole of this week we've been preparing to, on Monday, the day after tomorrow, our team will be going to the EC to go and reserve the name and start preparing for the resolution number two of forming another platform. Hmm. Benjamin Katana, is there an old man in a, a house of the state smiling at all these events? Yeah, certainly. I, I think the starting point is that uh, political parties... Remember the stick. Yes. <laughs> that, that political parties are basically... Uh, when people join political parties, it's because they have shared aspirations. Now, when the aspirations are no longer uniform, I think it is not improper for people to part ways. Uh, it, but it is not improper. It is not improper. So it is proper for people to part ways. If they feel that they no longer have shared aspirations mm. with the other group that sits in Najana Nkumbi. And I think uh, my brother uh, Kaija has uh, painted a picture of what has transpired that has led FDC to where it is now. And I think, it, uh, in my opinion, uh, is that <coughs> Uganda is largely under a military dictatorship that must disguise as a democracy to tick some boxes in terms of being able to relate with other countries and the benefits that flow from that. And the way military dictatorships operate is that they must dismantle all centers of power around which citizens coalesce. And one of such centers of power is political parties. You remember that when the NRA captured power, they first of all abolished political parties. And because of pressures from different angles, then they were forced to now say we have opened the window. We can have uh, multi-party democracy where people are able to mobilize and coalesce around political parties. And so, the, by character, the, the old man that you are talking about, Museveni and the NRA, now that has become NRM somehow, they are not people that want to have political parties that are functional much as circumstances have forced them to have a semblance of political parties that are functional. So one of them is, one of the ways through which these political parties must be dismantled is through infiltration. And this infiltration will lead to internal strife. Now this internal strife is what we are seeing in FDC that has led them to where they are now. And, and, and I think it is good for both sides. Instead of staying together and fighting every day, let the Amriat group, if they feel that these ones are no longer adding value, work and mobilize. If Kaija and his colleagues at Katonga feel that the other people were contaminating the mission, let them have space where they can mobilize and, uh, and build momentum towards realization of the mission. Of course, in the internal management of parties, away even now from the external forces that we are talking about, I think many times, uh, and I think this is largely about the, the politics of the day, that even most of us Ugandans generally, 
we we have not yet become democrats at heart so we, even we, in the management of political parties internal political management of political parties there are aspects that also breed that internal strife in parties because some people want to run them as personal yet these are public entities and so you end up with conflicts of this nature and i, I and and i believe that especially for us who are in the opposition that we should and i think it's general Moss who always says that you cannot give what you don't have we should aspire to build organizations that are well streamlined that adhere to the constitutionalism mm -hmm. but particular even the constitutions of their particular political formations and have mechanisms of resolving these conflicts yeah but they are conf uh, i'm not saying that in resolution of these conflicts they should compromise on principles I'm, I'm giving you an extra minute just now because now you also have your own Dr. Wanika. Uh, will he also request to start another party? And, and that's the point I'm making that political parties must be able to <coughs> resolve these, find means of resolving amicable conflicts but without compromising on the principles, the fundamental principles that guide political parties. So I believe that uh, the individual that you have mentioned or any other, if they have any grievances that are not largely personal, they should raise them within the party structures and have them resolved amicably before they start running around and uh, turning what would be small misunderstandings into bigger conflicts that will blow up mm. parties because at the end of the day you may if you have aspirations really that you hold dear they should be more important than your personal comfort okay in the political organization mm. there's frederick karamaji on on ex former literature says parties should avoid the word democratic in their names because they end up democrat Democrat <laughs> Party <laughs> Forum for Democrat Change Social Democrat so they should, Party. They, they should become uh, dictatorial and use the word uh, so that they become democratic. Rwanda. <laughs> Abdul, uh, founder of FDC Party. Uh, all these happenings, surely there's an old man smiling at all this. So as instead an, of as an ex, <laughs> 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 instead of. Uh, opposition parties fighting him they are fighting each other <sighs> i had the his uh, royal highness the kabak of uganda when he came back after being in this pause for some time cite a luganda proverb i don't know whether i got it cut ejiranga netonya eriokanga netonya no lava and that's what is happening. Mm. I can't cite it. Kind uh, of what Irene Nakasita has been saying about people coming in to help. You see, when we came together, and this is what Katana is talking about, we had what we thought were shared values, aspirations, and norms. And eventually, some of us came from the dem from I came from Uganda People's Congress. Uh, my friends came from DP. Others came from NRM. Others even had no parties, and we formed this thing called Forum for Democratic Change. So no many things happened. Eventually, we realized that we had so many contradictions after a very long time. Uh, I'm sure the country realizes that in our first seven years, we were a solid group. And we had, we, I thought, realigned the political mo opposition in this country. And we are moving smoothly that many people thought it would be an alternative to the NRM. Uh, like, when you look, for example, at the U.S., after some time, people say, well, the Democrats have done this, let us try. Mm -hmm. The, the Republicans. We thought we had done that. 
then all of a sudden the contradictions became too much and uh, we reached a position where we thought some of us thought we were in a wrong company really wrong company that's why we sometimes go back to Eringa, what? Jirane Tonya Nola. Something like that. Because the sort of talk I hear my brother Kaija, you know, saying now, I mean, it's not new. Sure. That's the very thing you were choosing us. That's, uh, and uh, they were together with Amriyat, and uh, there is no filth and garbage which these guys didn't threat us. Nothing. Every kitchen sink was thrown at us. Why? We had a difference of opinion on how that party should be run. We had a difference of... And the beauty about us, we put our difference on table. What are you are talking about? We never worked behind. Instead, they were working behind. Uh, we don't want to go into that because we don't want to sound bitter. Later on, we realized when we were wrong camp and we left. <coughs> we walked away. <coughs> we were not happy, but we are not bitter. Because you see, when for us, because this is not the first splinter group, when we walked away, we didn't return that filth, we didn't return that garbage, we didn't return that kitchen sink. We never. Oscar, I'm sure you used to ask that question here, and I used to say that when a marriage breaks down, it's no use for you to go throwing the garbage and so on. The others who feel comfortable about it. For us, we said, okay, I think we are in the wrong company. We reached what we lawyers call irretrievable breakdown. Mm. We had reached it and walked away. And we wish them well. Unfortunately, we knew it would come. And it, it, it actually, I, 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 it even came later. We thought it would come soon and so on. Because, uh, Kaija, you were acting in bad faith. Your group was acting in bad faith when it was together. And that's how we left. And you, you, you had to have these fights. So, one, this is my view. I can say more and more, but I don't want to, to do that. I, because we've written, I have written a book, and eventually when it comes out, it has facts and so on. For example, I'll tell you where TVO came from and who was running it. TVO. I'm sure Kaija knows it. I'll tell you where it was came from. I, I'll tell you what it was its mission. All those things, we, they are now being written down and so on. You see, Kaija, if you can't politically really walk away and you don't think what you are doing is about bitterness. You, 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 you sound bitter, you, you think if it can't be you, you must break this thing. You, for us, what we put in to have FDC, I'll give you an example. I have tens of millions of my own money, tens of millions, which I contributed towards the purchase of that headquarter. My own money, tens of millions. And many of us did, real money which we would have used on our families and so on. But we thought we are building a home. We are building a party. And, and many, many years, people said, mm. yeah, these guys were. But we said, okay, we leave it to them. Let us go and find a way of making our new contribution. So why, Oscar, today there is no way you will get Mr. Kaija and Amoria together that they can reconcile. They have, they have reached that position. No, of not sit, being able to sit at the same they table. They can never, they can never. Because one, they all mistrust each other for different reasons. Yes, I did. We were very close friends. Uh, Mr. Kaija tells you they even sleep in the same bed. And I want people to, <laughs> to take it the reality that he, he didn't mean the other thing. Uh, so, the, in, that in, is in how, hard times. Yeah, yes. That mm -hmm. is how close they, they were. were. And now that they have fallen apart and so on, when I hear mm. on of Amelia saying, oh, you're de cooler, is it de cooler? Blah, blah. Then these ones also <laughs> returning fire. <laughs> tamale, mirundi, what? I, I said, what is this all going on? <laughs> you see, and, and I don't want you to go so much into legalese. When we came together as FDC, we are not talking about legalese. 
we are talking about a political struggle, a political mm. process, and political so, yeah. brotherhood. Now, you, that brotherhood has irretrievably broken down. Please move on. Okay. Forget about FDC. FDC is gone. Like indeed, we left it for you. And you, you, you <laughs> we left it for you. It is gone. Leave it for those who are. Yeah. Mm. And if you think they are all that bad, they will continue fighting again. Okay. Thank you, Abdul. Like we left you and you fought. Lydia. Mm, the owner of a stick. <laughs> She's a victim of the stick. <laughs> She's a victim of a stick. So, um, on the stick, I would like to inform those who are just experiencing the first strokes that will come. Because <laughs> you have a choice to run away, or if you come, Maybe your your strokes will be will be lighter. But now that Kaija is here, uh Katutu talked about his biggest contribution to FDC and gave an example of the con financial contribution to the party headquarters in Najana and Kumbi. But I think where where I sit, I think one of the biggest contributions people leave leave the party that you can never get back. From here, you can make another billion shillings of money. But what you can never bring back is your energy, your usefulness. Those years are gone, I, I, and they're gone. I, spent I saw the, you, the, prime the energy, of my politics. the prime of... You can never be 40, 30, with the proper eyes of deep research looking at what the other political parties in the other countries have done, how they've come out of it, traveling to see what other countries and parties have formed, that you can never get back. Each and so every branch you, was formed by us. So those are some of the south. things. And, and if people like you can let go of that, because sometimes we hold on to, you talked about marriages. For those of us, when you marry, you even change the name. I'm now Mutende. Hmm? I was not born in Mutende, but the name you change your name, you, yeah, at yeah, least I added on. I was asking us I, to I, your name in the menu also. Mm. <laughs> hey, <I think> <laughs> hey, you, you, Oscar, like now, there is, you know, I am a lawyer, I'm a, a professional educationist, I am, but people know me as NRM. So I'm like a if you see me, they say that NRM woman. Oh, so I cannot oh, yeah. leave NRM despite all the challenges. That's mm. my brand in the Thank politics you. of our country. So, Kaija, your, your sympathy if, you, if you are, want to leave FDC, please leave. Do not kill the history. of. If, if you are worth it, it will die on its own. Why must you kill it? You leave it. If it grows, let it grows. If it dies, let it die on its own. I've heard you people saying you first of all want to kill if dc or did you just it or something like that then you form a new one and where i sit i'm like don't do that because it does not bring out mm. the leadership that we want we are not here to kill we are here to build you never know the one you've left tomorrow you will come back it's like when you're in a marriage again what's let me finish this if you're in a yes. marriage and the marriage has gone bad you don't kill where you are coming from you've invested so much for you just move on you, you even have the, children the, the, well, you might have even children this, because you might look back one day Thank you, lady. and you've mm. made up never okay. say never so that's I, what I, I want to say yes. i feel your pain i feel the emotions i feel the anger those guys really yeah. they have money because i i feel them as well where i come from yeah. but <laughs> don't don't fight they have money you, yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah 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 in this country yeah. don't say you are poor there are people that really have money and so. it's not it's not just money so they I, have what you I, call I, disposable income yeah but please Thank in, you, the, in the sake of our country's I, I politics, want people, our do not talk to, about killing to have last in other parties. Just move on. The, That's my humble yes. request to you. The, the, Harold Kaija, let me allow you one sentence before we have Ivan Ramwena and Irene Nakasita to close. Uh, thank Mid you so much. Uh, you, what, and the question is directly, what do you take from this discussion? In, in less than a minute. You know, I, I take it that uh, colleagues feel we shouldn't dissolve the uh, the FDC. Just go in peace. Uh, the FDC, we, we should just move on. But so you, you see, <laughs> the shares, the fellow shareholder is here, the, the shares, uh, what we really put in, we feel the organization no longer 
fits the bill. Hmm? No, no, no. Uh, <coughs> as we said, what do you take from this discussion? Well, no, so maybe you will go back to party. Yes, and no, yeah, discuss. yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. I have picked the yeah. the ideas okay. uh, Thank to, you. to let it to go and move on. I'll go to my to, to, to my ranks and tell them colleagues are saying yeah. we move on and just okay. leave it to die on this road. Thank you so much, uh, Harold Kaija. And then uh, I had, uh, I'll just say his first name, Dr. John. He says, we manage by crisis, even if we predict nothing is likely to happen. Who doesn't know that the next tra tragedy is going to involve border borders? Either there will be a big accident, mm. and then that will be sparked off. There was one where five um, people died somewhere in yeah, Zimbabwe. You see? So, Ivan Bamuyana, uh, I hope you've enjoyed Star Cafe Goodies. What's your conclusion on the topic we've had today? Um, here is the thing. Um, there's a saying that if a chameleon is to survive a fire, it must forget the walking style of its ancestors. <laughs> We've done so, things... <laughs> if a chameleon is... To to fire. Yes. Yeah. It must change its swagger of walking. <laughs> it must forget the walking style of its ancestors. <laughs> and hurry up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and run. Yeah. And, and <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I mean chameleon, the animal. Eh? Right, right. <laughs> 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 a disclaimer <laughs> quickly, quickly yeah, right. yeah. yeah so um not the vocal what i vocal. cause our government to move towards is to forget being slow on response but to also avoid procrastinating on response and r like i said earlier response is not an event it's a process let's mm. have proper structures for response i am surprised red cross uh when they say uh the planning affects their response when they can't move in so i propose that the ministries that are in charge we find some form of synergy when we have integrated systems like uh mr katutu said uh, you mukono should work together with kampala integrated systems push areas to okay. far greater horizons thank you thank you silos then uh irene nakasita Mukono said, "Don't bring your Don't bring your rubbish here. Okay, so don't. But forty percent of that people actually Wakiso. live in Kampala. <laughs> they, they rubbish Kampala. But so, saying, don't bring it here. Irene Nakasita, fine. For me, I want to uh, request Ugandans because I should what? ask you: Will you be at the cancer run tomorrow, Red Cross? Yes, we will. Because the Uganda, the Rotary cancer run is tomorrow Sunday." at well, the Kolo airstrip so we are expecting to see you there saving mm. lives all saving the time. lives yes. yes so for you to reach to us because i know people have emergencies anytime we have a toll free number that i would like to read out to the public please do it is 0800 211 it's a 24 hour number and it operates anytime 0800 Two one one zero double eight, and we are also setting up a humanitarian fund, so that whoever has anything to contribute to preparedness to response, we will be sharing the account number and also um, the the way you can be part of our humanitarian efforts to be able to save lives. And this is part of preparedness, mm. so that we don't really rush to come to respond when it's too late, but we wish that we invest in preparedness more okay. and save more lives. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Philip tells you, uh, Abdul, that please insist that there be a national tribute to these victims of bad governance. Will you take up on uh, that one? Mm. It's worth thinking about. Maybe. Mm. Thank Maybe. you so much. Listeners of the Capital Gang, thank you, our guests, Ivan Bamweana, research at Makere University. Thank you so much. Thank you, Irene Nakasita, the PRO of Red Cross. Mr. Harold Kaija, we hope you've taken advice from the table. Uh, Honorable Abdul Katuntu, uh, Honorable Lydia Wanyoto, Benjamin Katana, thank you so much. Thank you, Star Cafe. I am Oscar Semoyam Soke, and I shall see you next week. <laughs>